Hey, what's up guys? This is Johan and on this video, I'm going to be doing a one of my general updates since I've been gone for almost a month now. Um, I've just been really busy with the whole new year and um, the whole holiday stuff. I had some family come in that I haven't seen for almost 13 years. Um, so they took up most of my time and um, with all the family in, I did get sick. So everybody left and I was sick for almost a week. So I'm just getting over a flu or a um, some kind of strip throat stuff, but um, feeling a whole lot better. My voice is a little bit deeper <laughs> than it usually is, but I'm getting over it. I'm starting to feel a lot better. But yeah, guys, let's get into the 75 gallon aquarium update. So Tank has been doing really well up until right after as Christmas got here. Um, a few things happened. I think one of the other feeders up top up there um they um i think i opened it a little bit more to just to allow the um to feed some more because i, I knew i would be really really busy um during the week uh whilst my family was here so i, I figure um I f i'll feed the fish a little bit more um because i usually let the all the fishes feed um the first one feeds at two o'clock every single day and then this one feeds uh, four, t four times a day after that. So I increased the amount it fed. Um, so it increased the nutrients and the fish loved it. <laughs> they enjoyed, you know, getting some extra food, but some of the corals didn't like it and the water was actually um, pretty tarnished. And since I, I'm, I'm not doing as much water changes as I usually do, that kind of fixed some of the corals um but yesterday i did a large water change about 40 about 50 gallons um, i'll be doing two more um two, tomorrow five gallon and another five gallon the day after just to make sure everything evens out so um some of the corals that didn't um really like that whereas First, this forest fire digi. Um, if you guys have seen it before, it's usually a lot more branches and stuff like that. So, but now we can see it's a little nub, and that is because I wanted to cut all the pieces off that started to RTN uh, and started to lose flesh, and just put them in different places. So, if you could just take a look right there in the center, you can see how it's stripped back just a little bit, but it's starting to look a whole lot better just from that water change. So. Um, yeah, so I put a few different pieces of coral all over the tank of that forest fire digi all over the tank, um, and th that was my that is my one of my f one of the two corals in here that is like my canary in the coal mine. If anything is going wrong, those are the first two corals to start um, showing signs of it. But it started to happen so so quickly that I didn't. Um, like it's actually RTN in like two or three days uh, well not RTN STN um, in about two or three days and that water change actually it just bounced back all the pops that open right now so it looks like a nice little red ball but um, so I put a piece of that um, forest fire digi right here and that one is looking really well and you can see it right there still have that end that has that bleached out but it looks it looks a whole lot better it's completely fuzzy again compared to what it looked like the pops were drawn in the skin was dying back and starting to turn yellow i mean not yellow white almost bone white with some little dot red pops instead of the nice green or bluish green um skin that you usually see so there was no almost no skin on that coral but in almost 24 hours because i think i yeah in about 24 hours the um this the pops ex extended and i can't really see the skin so i think the skin is still not 100 percent but it's healing up the next coral that is my other uh, culinary in the coal mine it's uh is this coral right here this is a green toxic postulopora and um you could see the ends how it's it's kind of just you just see coral skin it looks really good there's no um slow tissue necrosis or anything like that but what you can see at the bottom versus the tips of the coral how bushy this coral is um this coral usually looks so bushy it doesn't look like a stick it looks like it's um uh a lps or something um but the bottom it's a little bit more bushy um than it usually is um that 
it's a little less bushy than it usually is, but it's still showing you know, all the polyps extension. But the top, there's almost no polyps extension. So that usually indicates to me when something is up. Um, I only see that when I, if I dose like um, lanthanum chloride, when I dose lanthanum chloride in my oil tanks and all the, um, and all the, uh, the different like flocculants and the when the um, the lanthanum chlorides um, react to the phosphate in the water, so um, the core doesn't like that. All the tentacles and the pops retract. So um, with that, with those two corals showing the reaction, I was like, okay, something's definitely wrong. And with, and with me not doing uh, a bunch of water changes like I used to, um, I decided to do a 45, 50-ish gallon water change yesterday. And um, like I said, all the corals looks like they bounced back. The water's looking a lot clearer. Um, fish are always fine. Um, but this system is about, I would say, 110 gallons. That includes the 75 gallons up top, or let's say 60 gallons up top. And then this sump down here adds another... 48 um 48 gallons down here and then over here with the protein skimmer on this protein skimmer section and then an, that adds another t uh 15 20 gallons or so and then another two and a half gallons of um what are the water in the cancer filter and that those are just rough estimates so um just about 100 uh, 110 gallons yeah guys um the tank has been doing really after the water change tanks start looking it's like it took a whole just turn around um some of the cores are still starting to bounce back this uh green monty power i'm not sure what the exact name for it is um that one it it's you can see it's not as bright as it usually is the far back side is bright and the tips are a little bit brown uh the edges are a little bit brown a little bit gray actually um and then but besides that you know the water change really um pushed everything back together but some of the corals that are didn't um take any effect they actually just kept trucking around it's these acros i think these are some type of uh bonsai acro i think these are green bonsais um and these are bulletproof corals so if anybody's interested in um diving into new acropora corals that aren't too hard um these are bonsai corals like i said and i have them all over the place they are really um, fast grower so i started with that model colony back there that i have fragged multiple times so i have a frag of it right there and then the piece of it right there or not even a frag mini colonies now of how quick they grow got some more back there some more back there I have them this is just everywhere <laughs> it kind of grows like a weed right now but you know if if you are looking for a nice hardy coral to start with um, that's a nice beginner acropora um, my uh, f um, green slime coral that I added last um, is doing really well science and crust right there and heal over um, I think it would have probably started a little bit more encrusting if I didn't go for that little mishap that happened during the holidays um, so that's kind of on my part um, adding more food than I needed to and um, another piece of the, <laughs> the fish are they are hungry so they're all over they haven't eaten today because I turned all the feeders off um, for the next few days so I've been just hand feeding them uh, mice so no not mice um, I've been hand feeding them this stuff that I got from Elos um, I gotta do a review on this one I've had it for a little bit um, and let me try and get some good light so this is um, just some uh, brine shrimp and this is their um, it, it's really nice clean food like usually you get mice and shrimp or whatever from the flat packs it's oily it pollutes your tank um, but when you put it well, let me get some right now I was about to feed the fish so they could calm down but the particulates are it's a really nice fine texture and it's not oily at all it doesn't really properly like pollute your tank so I'm just putting some in right there and besides the the actual um, the, the shrimp itself you don't really get anything else so it's really nice and I got the mice shrimp and some 
uh, baby brine shrimp and uh, copy pods. I, when I went to um, South Carolina, um, Francis, uh, Francisco, I think his name was, if I'm saying that right, um, gave me uh, two just to ch test out, or three just to test out. And um, I actually quite, quite like it because it's really clean food. I've had it for almost a year uh, and, well, not a year, almost uh, seven months, but never really used it. And then I opened it up about five months ago uh, because they have, it comes in a can, it's like four years uh, stable shelf life. And then once you open it, you have another, just about six, five to six months um, after you freeze it of, um, of it being able for you to feed your fish so i've been feeding the fish that for the past couple days and um just trying to keep the tank clean whilst it starts to recover and bounce back um i think i got uh two more five gallon water changes to do up throughout the week and then i'll do one last one next sunday and that should get everything back on track to the way it should be um so i may be doing water changes from now um continuing continuing the water changes and and then slowly winning them off and doing less and less as the year go on and i'll see if i need to um do water changes uh, as much but um, i think the tank so far it's stable at getting one a water change once a month or once every two two or i mean once every five weeks and that usually takes you out of a tank as long as i don't overfeed or have the, the um the or the feeders doing anything too crazy um so let's talk about the fish they've been doing really well they just seem to um don't care about anything um my convict tank still like a little puppy dog always up in center ready to go just swimming and eating everything Nasu tang is doing good as well again quite large <laughs> need to get him out of this tank soon um still fighting her with his reflection um um he kind of calmed down on it especially because of the the whole well nope there he goes again uh but the whole mishap that happened with the overfeeding of the tank the glass was just thick with algae so i should have done a video earlier but like i say i was sick so i didn't um do anything about do any video about that but he didn't really bang his tail on the thing so he couldn't see his reflection as much so he was more swimming around um but he once i cleaned the glass he went back into it not as much um, the Morsh Adult still doing really well. Him and the Queen Angel still going at it. Um, now he starts to fight back a little bit, but the Queen Angel is the most dominant fish. So um, Morsh Adult is doing really well still. Happy, healthy, and swimming around. Oop, and there goes, it's just still doing it. But like I said, the Morsh Adult is still doing really well. Eating heavy. Um, still going after some of my corals, like the. Um, the zoanthids right here um but i don't really care because they grow back so fast that you know he eats it it grows back fast it's a nice food source for him not nice natural food source so he's not only eating like f prepared foods um, my queen angel uh, my most beloved fish i am have this fish i've had this fish for over a year and six months now um it's been doing really well taking uh taking charge of the tank putting everybody in order um i was for a center very beautiful fish very easy fish to keep if anybody wants the angel fish um in a reef tank this would be one of my um choices you don't have to watch out for some corals like some zoanthids and a few um, lps um like some lobos um and acans and stuff but i do I do have one right there that it kind of stays away from. So you can see just there, uh, it stays away from it as much as again. Let me see if I could get a brighter picture of it. So yeah, right there, it kind of just le leaves it alone, and um, the fish don't really you know bother it because of the position it is right there. But besides that, this queen angel is a really nice pick. Um, maybe it's just this one but um this so far of all the angels i've kept this is a rice, really nice angel besides its aggression um it doesn't really nip at coral that much but it does get really big so if you do want this fish um you do know that it does get over a foot long to sometimes two feet long i've seen them 
at the um, Georgia Aquarium, about two and a half feet long and massive, like the the height and the height of the 75 gun. And this is about 21 inches, so 21 inches height in height and then about two feet long. So these guys get really massive. Um, and that will probably be when I get an uh, extremely large swim, swim, swimming pool size tank. Um, but that's later on the line when the fish is almost 20 something years old and I'm done. I'm getting ready to retire and all that. Um, the, um, f the flame fish is out a lot more, uh, especially when I feed that stuff. You can see him right there, out a lot more, just swimming. Um, I started to enjoy the fish. I still haven't gotten another fish in or another set of those guys in yet. I'm still kind of waiting off, holding off until everything sells out and I got to run them for quarantine. Um, the issue with me quarantining these kind of fish right here, it's they are very sensitive and um, if uh, anything goes on, I could easily kill them. So you put five into a stable tank and you probably end up still end up with one in a stable tank. So quarantining these little guys, you know, Gotta be, I gotta do a very careful quarantine of um, the firefish when I decide to finally get them. He's a nice little guy enjoying um, a big tank. Um, Sun come out a lot more. Um, next thing, it's my uh, the critters. So the cleaner shrimp right here. They've been an awesome job taking care of the fish. Every time I put my hands in the tank, um, they jump out and start to clean my hands. You just see one right underneath there. And then the other one is kind of back there. So they they do they are model citizens help clean the fish, and the Queen Angel actually backs off of all the fish when they are getting clean. So um, I I'm happy that I enjoy. I mean <laughs> happy that I added these um, um, cleaner shrimp to my tank. I am thinking of adding a cleaner fish, but I'm still debating if I want to add a cleaner fish to um this this system probably the bigger system but um i have some news about the bigger system um it's gonna be a no-go for a little bit um i'll disclose that later on um it's not anything with all the stuff is almost ready to get it up here it's just something uh changed so i'll probably let you guys know wednesday what's going on and why i'm not sending up the big tank um but yeah, um, so that is the 75 gun up top. Um, so let's talk about some of the corals. Besides, um, I always talk about the Force Fire DG and the big um, Euphelia that's here. I always talk about those. Um, but some other, you know, hand-picked corals that I have in here, um, like this um, Pavona coral, I have it everywhere in my tank as well. It's almost grows like a, a weed. But what I like about it, because it grows so fast, one of the things it is, it is a very um, territorial kind of coral. So it is, it's not aggressive. It doesn't send out, it doesn't send out any sweepers or anything like that. But if any coral gets really close to it, it, um, it wins that um, fight. So what I have done with it, it's right here. This, um, could you move dude? Like, I'll get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Queen Angel. Move him out of the way. And here comes the nasal tank. <laughs> Just in the way. Let me try to feed them again. Get them out of the way. Some food in there. Yeah, that way they could just give me some space. <laughs> Alright, so that uh Montipore, that red Montipore right there, that guy has is one of the fastest growers in my tank. And it started to encroach on the rock and um just start taking over the rock. So right there. You could see where it started to touch the Pavona, and the Pavona is starting to win, so it's starting to kill off some of that. So I'm using the Pavona right now as a way to control the Montipore. And even when it touches that other acro that grows like a weed, it doesn't really kill it. It grows around the other acro. So it's a, fa a quick, fast grower, but um, any other coral that I, that is extremely fast, like the Montipore, <coughs> I use it to just as a defense mechanism to keep it away, to kind of corral that coral into another place so it's not um, you know, encroaching on all the corals I want to keep. Like, I don't want this rock to just be overtaken by that one um, red Monty. Um, I have some nice little, uh, I have another piece of Force Fry DG on there. I have another piece of Acro on there that I am monitoring for a little bit before I, um, I want it to get taken over by another coral. 
Also, this um, multiple super toaster right here. It's one of the nice few cars that I want to just take off. Uh, but it's a slow grow, even though it's a Monty. It's taking its precious time to get to you um, a nice big size. But I know once it gets going, it's going to just explode and be just like that red monty but this is one of those cars i really really like um i like the fact that it's played in and then it also has um the little coralettes that jorts jut straight up so it has a nice little you know different type of growth pattern than most corals as either branching or just straight up played in or encrusting so it has a bit of encrusting plating and <laughs> branching so i really really like that coral i think it's a monte so, so that's what i call it um I'll, I'll if i'm if it's not i'll make sure to put the right caption but i think it is a monte so tosa <laughs> yeah so yeah guys um another coral let me see another coral that's in here that um i don't really talk about oh I, I know exact coral if I could get a proper angle on it, but um, so down here Right there. I'll show you a squirrel. So on screen um, On the camera it has a orange the head. It's almost like a um, Cyphaster I think they are called um, Coral that I don't um, Really talk about as much because this is just one of those filler corals that I bought and I um, want to see what it looked like so I've had this crawl for a good long time and it's gone through many phases of dying, coming back alive, dying. And this one right now it is on its um, recovery phase from dying because it fell off a rock that wasn't glued in properly and was in the sand. So it went to die and um, so now we came back. It's coming, bouncing back. I, had, I actually bought two frags of it and... Um, so this one, it looks on screen, it looks like purple skin with um, orange head, but in real life, orange um, pops, but in real life it has pops and almost looks brown. So on its bouncing back face, it always looks brown, but on screen it actually looks really, really much more nice than it is. Uh, I need to see if I can get a proper angle of the second one because it actually went in between some coral and I, um, it's, I forgot about it totally and then I just looked over one time I was like wait what the heck is that <laughs> I totally forgot about the coral and um, it's really nice so I'll go over there see if I could get a nice little shot of it all right guys so you could just see right there over there right there in the center of the screen right there and um, I can't get a good shot of it um, with the camera because once you use the camera at the angle of where that coral is it kind of just um, makes it look a little bit hazy but just you, what you can see on screen right now, um, it has a few different hints. Like there's a, it has purple, green, orange, bright yellow, just a whole mix of color that you know I got for um, a. I think that car was like maybe ten dollars at the store. It just looks like a brown orange coral and um nobody buy it so they sold it for like like five ten dollars i think it was maybe eight dollars actually um but it was just sitting there for a few weeks and i said let me just go ahead and get it and see what comes of it um it was a test of curl i wasn't sure what i was still kind of um early in the um getting good with growing corals so this is why it became um and just multiple corals i wish i could get a good picture of it if i do get a picture of it i'll make sure to put it post it over so you guys can see it but like i showed you the, the earlier coral um that one um turned into that so i think it's some type of sci -fastria. it just looks regular um brown kind of color so this side of the aquarium i am i am on the like the back side of the aquarium where you guys don't really see this as much um let me take this filter off because it makes it it gets doesn't look as good okay there we go so took the filter off and uh this is like the back side of the 75 gallon aquarium this side i come up um when i come up steps down here um it's dark so it's like you can't see it's like six or seven feet down below um and uh so yeah um how i built the tank it is basically a penance peninsula style aquarium um, right near my railing. Um, so when I come home from work, I get to um, see my aquarium and see my fish as soon as I get, walk through the door. 
So um, this is the back side. Um, you know, see this side the, the most, I, or at all. I try to put in some videos every now and then. Um, but back here, I got some nice um, hammer curls that I have taken off. Um, I think these are two, a green and then um, this is like a yellowish green and this one has more of the hammer tips and the one back there has more of like a single tip it almost looks like a torch but it's a hammer because it has much thicker um, tentacles and then I broke the arch down and I put um, it back here and now it's just a Montipora um, tower so I have different I have like a plate in Monty down here, some more plate in, and then I have that same encrust in Monty bar that's up here that I showed you guys from the, from the front. That was that is battling this um, Pavona. Um, I have it everywhere. I start like a little frag like that, and it's just everywhere in my tank. <laughs> so right here, I have some of that Monty, and then I have a plated Monty up here that broke off from the front of the tank and is here now. So. Um, once it shuts up and it takes a hole, it's a race time to grow. I'm expecting to see a nice kind of spiral um, going all the way up. So it's gonna. This I think this is like a Monty Power um, Capricornus. I think that's those are the one that um, basically make make um, make uh, like caps that you know spiral out. Um, but yeah, this backside I really love it because I don't see it as often. I only see it when I get home, um, and it's just here, so it's a nice little view. Um, so whilst we're back here, I could actually show you um, what was happening to that Fort Fry Digitado up front. This is another rock of Montipora um, Digitado that I have back here. Um, that this one still hasn't completely bounced back, but you could see that one frag right there in the middle how it looks like it's um the skin is it looks white but it has the um pops are open that's what it looks like but the pops aren't fully open so if i go right here and this these are all the same colonies this is all from the same colony that piece i broke off was actually dying and that's the main bottom so you could see the difference how it's a lot more fuzzy than that white bone skeleton right there and um that's just what the coral looked like. Um, it actually looks like some type of a, um, like a frogfish, the white frogfish um, that, you know. But anyways, yeah. So that's what the Forge Fire Digital looked like. Uh, but with just the nice little water change I did yesterday, or the nice big water change I did yesterday, it um, started to nicely bounce back. So slowly but surely, it will get there. Um, my oldest coral in the tank, uh, it was getting eaten on by um, all my angels that I had before, uh, my queen angel and um, even the um, even the March idol. I, I decided to take it up for up front um, in plain view, I usually see it and put it back here and it has just completely taken off. Um, it started with like one big head that I bought almost almost six no <laughs> I haven't been out almost um, three and a half years ago and it just wasn't doing anything um, it was getting beaten on by all the fish um, I put in a 20 gallon nano and then it started to show a little bit more signs of growing and then it went from one head to like five heads and then it just remained stagnant I put it in this tank and um, it slowly started to show you know um, that was doing well so I moved it from the front and put it in the back where I couldn't see it uh, and then I came back a month later and it just took off so it just has um, heads everywhere it's not nothing doesn't look all that pretty um, but for me it's, you know it's one of the cinnamon and the corals that I've had for a long time and when all my other corals die and I thought you know I couldn't grow coral <laughs> it's still here growing so um, I expect when in a year or two down the line that is gonna completely take over this entire rock right here and then go back and all that so just you know happy that I have it um, even though it doesn't look all that good but on camera it doesn't really look all that good but what I could see in person it's like has um, green a green ring uh, green mouth and like almost purplish uh, this is a light purple um, like skin going from the center f from the center all the way out to like the edges where the um, yellow tentacles are I mean the green tentacles are so it might be a polythor because the skin looks like it has sand grains in it but I have no idea um, but it's just one of the oldest corals I've always had yeah guys so this is you know like backside like I said um, 
fish are doing good coral are doing good uh is there any other coral that's back here that i don't really show um i think that is pretty much all the corals um i did have a oh so let me talk about this one right here um that's another one of the green slimers that i put back here i never really showed exactly where i put it and you can see some um a little bit of death on it and that is because right there you can see that white spot right there i did not know that um there was a bit of coral that is in this tank um that started to spawn in this tank i think um this one started to not spawn but um it spawned but it's not spawned it's like when it uh releases its polyps and the polyps encrust in the rock like a baby instead of um it's the spawn like sperm and eggs it wasn't sperm and eggs it's more like it released the polyp the polyp attached somewhere and it started to grow so right there and it started to fight for each other i was like oh my gosh this coral is dying too it's supposed to be hardy coral it's supposed to die but when i look closely it was just another coral that was there stinging on it so that's there and besides that one coral that spawned i have another coral that um well not spawn <laughs> um what is the word clone itself i was just call it clone itself um it's my um so this style right here is one of the other cor corals that um, cloned itself um, and it put some babies throughout the tank um, and I think that is kind of known um, st some style of warriors, um, that do that um, when they sense anything is wrong in the tank uh, or they are stressed out they basically send um, their pops out and then it falls out of different places so one place that did happen is right here yeah, so right here on this um, on this clam or mussel that I have, um, actually I have two clams in here that um, start off as little tiny, you know, little tiny things that I thought it wasn't a clam, but I thought it was just a piece of rock and it turns out they open. So maybe some type of hydro, um, like clam or like a mussel that's just in here. But you can see it right there on its shell at the bottom right right there Ooh, my fingers in the way so right there you could see that little piece of uh style of that just attached to it and it's just growing so it's just everywhere in the tank uh, i've seen i've seen the um the clone of the polyps of the stuff just popping up at random places uh, when the coral did a little bit of polyp bail out but that coral is still completely 100% okay besides the base of the coral dying off because it is in lower light um, or not getting enough light from the top I may have to do some more fragging of that and open it up so the pops at the bottom get some light or take the pops at the bottom and frag them out um, I also have another uh, clam right down here and you can just see it right there so that is the other one and um in the right lighting they actually the skin actually glows orange so late at night uh, when the um, the center light is on it has like a moonlight effect the skin glows nice nice orange color on the shell um and i have another piece of that style right there uh that's doing doing the same polybill as well so um Besides those corals, those are most of the corals I wanted to talk about today. And all the fish are still doing pretty much the same as they were doing. Happy, healthy, eating. Um, I think the clownfish are starting to get, uh, the female at least is a lot bigger. The black dots that were on them are starting to develop into um, less of the dots all around them and more like the black um, stripes that they have is starting to spread out through starting to become more solid so i think it was just a pigment change as they get older i've seen multiple people um seeing the same thing it's either stinks from coral or whatever but then further down the, that same fish is starting to get a lot more black on its body um so it's just a color more for um different change in the pigment um yeah guys so that is pretty much it for um, the top part of the aquarium. Um, the bottom part, not much has changed. Still running everything the same way, um, except I did move all the rock that I had in this part. I put it on the cockroach skimmer side, but pretty much the same thing. Um, nothing too much to change. Um, but that has done it for this update. So I was saying um, that I. Um, I may not be able to set the 75 gallon up, I mean the 180 gallon up, um, and it's 
nothing to do with like um, getting the tank and stand and all that. It's more or less um, I'm having a ch a change in occupation. Um, I uh, will be moving to another state for a little bit, and um, I'll probably disclose the exact job I'll be doing um, later down during the year. Um, so um, this tank will be staying here um, in in my house. My wife will be taking care of it. But as far as like a job, I got to move and do a few things and figure some stuff out. So um, the, the hobby may be taking a little bit of pause and the YouTube videos may be taking a bit of a pause, but um, not too much of a bad pause. I'll still try to um, upload videos um, if I... I'm in an area where I see a LFS or something like that. Or if I could get me a little fish tank in my little time away from home, then I'll do that. But um, more on that later on during the week, I'll probably try to do a video on Wednesday and uh, let you guys know exactly what my job is and um, <laughs> what my new job will potentially be. So, yeah, guys. Anyways, um, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. And... Um, I'll catch you in the next one. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. And also remember to subscribe so you could follow um, this tank and any other future videos that you guys are going to see, any other future different changes. Um, but the big tank, it's still a go for it. It's just, it just got pushed back um, by a few months. Um, but, you know, I got to go out and make money <laughs> to get the big tank up, <laughs> you know. But anyways, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one.